And throughout the show, many of you have been giving us a lot more of your messages and so making the show a lot more interactive. And I have a couple of uh, messages from here and uh, I would want to read them. It says, uh, we are social worker trainees and our allowances and postings from government have still not been paid. Social work is good. Uh, and it's profit in the nation. So why are we being treated like this? Please, uh, this one is coming from Leia. Uh, uh, I hope that you can also add uh, where you're calling us from or where you're sending the messages and uh, exactly what you mean in the messages. So from uh, Dr. Abidi Kwanda, so aka Big Shoes, I think Benefsin should give us a break. How can Ghanaians vote for incompetent President Mahama again? But please, how did the ballot boss get missing? We need an explanation from Madam Charlotte to say hi to Mr. Prince Ali of Concern, Zekov Mohammed of Idukrom, and Iceman of Kwanda. So, and uh, I have a couple more of your messages. Um, this one says, a Good morning, is Benefson uh, thinking Ghanaians think through their stomachs? Uh, this, year's, this year, Ghanaians are going to vote for their lives, and nobody can stop the change as uh, the people of Bunkrugu, Napanduri, Binduri, uh, Bindi, and Bimbagbo uh, have shown it clear to Mr. Siedun Ketiabian Janama from Nampanduri. And many of you have been getting interactive, and that's what you've been doing throughout this very uh, election season, uh, interacting with us. And uh, through our foremost uh, program, Joy Ballot Box, you've been able to make your views known throughout the regions we brought that very edition of uh, the Joy Ballot Bo Box to a close on Friday as we hosted uh, that very edition in the northern regional capital, Tamale. And uh, we know there was a scuffle that took place, especially between supporters of um, the main candidates or from those two constituencies in the northern regional capital, Tamale, South and Central. And um, we would want to speak to a host of the program who is also a and the head of the political decks of uh, Joy FM, Evans Spencer. A very good morning to you, Evans. Good morning. Okay. Now, um, how did this uh, whole season of Joy Ballot Boss go? Well, it's been uh, it's been a tough journey. Um, it's been a journey that, um, well, when we started off, we never knew how it was going to go. But from what we've seen, it's in one of those uh, journeys that had carried a lot of people along. We've talking, we are talking about um, the last count based on what we just did in, uh, in Tamale. We've spoken to almost 5,000 people. Uh, and so yeah, it's been a journey uh, um, of, of giving a voice to many people, some, some of them in villages that um, you, people have, haven't been in a long time prepared of the country. But we've been there with set like the television, with radio, to get people to talk, which is, I guess, the most exciting part of all this uh, that we've done. We call it the epic journey, and it's been truly epic for the past, what, since April, when we started in, in Cape Coast. Uh, we know the scaffold that happened, but we also know it's because of um, how perhaps uh, the tension is in the political process and how agitated or perhaps also enthusiastic the supporters uh, of the various political parties the candidates are in this very electioneering. Would you say it's been the same in terms of the level or the, the type of atmosphere that you've witnessed throughout the regions that you've been to throughout the season? What I can say is that every region had its own dynamic. Um, so I guess the regions that had the most passionate group of voters, you, I would say, will be the Ashanti region, um, the northern region tops it all because of what happened with fire. Well, seem to have been some difficulty with um, the, the connection there, but we'll try as much as possible to, again, establish that very link. And we have a couple of your messages again, and I would want to go through. Uh, it says um, uh, we have a couple of um, some messages, and this one says, uh, Good morning. I belong to any political party, but I can say the NDC is uh, having evidence-based project that is convincing me 
uh, to vote them once again to continue. The future may be bright. Terrius uh, Silas from Techimang. Uh, he, he says hashtag election HQ. And uh, I will surely see you in 2017. Uh, pass the light to somebody you may wish to see in 2017 as well. I guess something that's um, going on social media. Good morning, uh, Roland and Mamave. I think Benefson is doing a great job and his survey shall come to reality. And that's from Sunday in Bole. Okay. You are wishing a uh, happy belated birthday to Collins Yamwa of Pandai, Senior China, uh, Arabuasi. And we have Evans back on the line. And uh, Evans, particularly, uh, I was asking you whether the atmosphere uh, was the same throughout the regions. And, and you were saying that, um, of course, the northern region topped it all. Yes. Uh, it, that, that's, that's one of the places. In fact, it's the place where we had the biggest challenge. But I must also say, um, in, in um, the western region, we had a similar issue there where we had to end the show abruptly. Mm. Um, but across the country, one thing that struck me is people are very engaged this year than, than most other election years. People want to engage more. People are pretty savvy about the issues. They know what the issues are. They want to put it across to their politicians. And, and I guess this is, this is one of the uh, key uh, trends that we've seen. We've been to nine regions so far. The only region we haven't been uh, is, the, is the eastern region. Uh, if you ask me why we haven't been to the eastern region, I can't tell you why. But that's the only region we haven't been. But all the nine other regions, that we've been, um, it, it's been pretty active. People are people are really engaged, and and we'll, we'll probably see that uh, play out in the polls um, when when people go to vote this year. I, I am predicting we're going to have a pretty high turnout this year, uh, based on what I've seen on the ground in villages such as Adaklu, which is pretty cut off. Uh, with Chao in the in the Upper West region, you have to travel a long distance to reach them and you get to the community and you're wondering can you hold a live tv radio program here for people to attend and you start the program and by 4 30 the entire park is full and it's overflown with people you're wondering where did they come from women children old young um and you're wondering are people disengaged in this part of the country, pretty cut off with the rest of, of us all? And, and for me, that, that, those are the indications that I, I use to, to point to why this year we might have a very high turnout, which would be good for our democracy. Mm. But that also makes you draw some conclusions that then for the topmost parties who have always gotten the higher of the percentages uh, since 1992, the election is going to be pretty close between the two. Yes, you, you, can, you, you can say that too. Um, one of the things we've seen is that this year, not only are people ready to engage, there's a lot of passion um, in, in, in people's bellies. So you go to the voluntary region, for example, the MPP feel a bit more galvanized this year than previous years. I mean, they were mobilizing, for example, to come to the Bower Box program, and they came in their numbers, and you listen to them watching the program, and, and you'll hear uh, more NPP chairs than NDC chairs, and this is very, uh, you know, tough terrain for the MPP. Um, you go to Kintampo, it's similar. You go to the northern region, we've we been to upper east, upper west, northern region. All these three regions of the north are strongholds of the of the uh, of the NDC, um, but again, you see people very very engaged, and you, I, as you say, we can close. All our elections have been closed, really, especially when when it's it's the issues are are, are been driven by the media and civil society. I expect this year again to be close, um, based on what I've seen, and I must tell you, from from speaking to what nearly five thousand people, um, whoever wins this. Who have a tough time turning turning it around and convincing people. One thing is clear: the messages have gone. People have heard it, and they're going to be making their decisions based on a number of issues. If you go to the northern region, uh, the the ethnic tribal links are pretty strong there. I mean, we've heard this play out the last two weeks when the president makes some comments that he's been criticised. But you understand why. Dr. Baumia also came under some criticism a few months ago when he was in the north, made tribal comments. But having been there in the three regions, you understand why the politicians will be using the tribal language there. Because people 
still largely vote on these lines. And we saw that play in the ballot box um, over, the, over the weekend and in the Upper West, Upper East as well. Uh, and so, yes, I mean, this is going to be pretty interesting by the time that the, the, the votes are counted. Mm. But for the incident on Friday that happened, um, what really uh, do you think were the similar tones? Well, it's, um, it's a, the feud that has been raging for a while now between the NDC and the MPP. It's just the, the political temperature that has gone up uh, to a level where you light a fuse and then it blows up into a, in, into a huge thing. Um, I must say that in this is Tamale South. A Tamale South is a stronghold of the NDC. Been won. I mean, the incumbent there is Harun Adjus, a very formidable political force there. Um, but the NPP have been attempting to make some inroads. Um, in other words, they've been attempting to try and uh, and 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 take that particular and take that particular seat um, from from the from the from the um, incumbent, uh, you know, uh, uh, parliamentary candidate there. And we saw it play out very strongly. And that is why the, 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 the confusion happened. In fact, I must tell you what happened. It's pretty simple, though, because when we started this, the program, it was pretty calm. In fact, I was impressed with the, with the unity that uh, both parties showed um, in, in coming and sitting down and listening and then, and then shaking hands. And, and, and the atmosphere was a party atmosphere. And you see, were, were sitting together, they were, you know, poking fun at each other. But then when... Um, after the MPP candidate for Tamale South has spoken, and um, Harun Idrisu got up to speak, there was a small group of MPP supporters who were close to the to the stage where they were seating, and they started causing the commotion. In fact, they were shouting and yelling and, and waving MPP uh, paraphernalia, which prevented um, Harun Idrisu from speaking. Now, that, as you can imagine, infuriated the NDC supporters there, who then said, well, the NDC supporters, rather, who then thought they could also retaliate. So I was in the crowd, and people were then moving from, from the crowd, and the NDC supporters in their numbers, and they were there in their numbers far more than the MPP, moved to the MPP side uh, to try and stop them. And of course, that's what uh, sparked the confusion. People were throwing blows. Um, the, the police had a tough time trying to control the crowd. In fact, at one point, the MCE for Tamale had to uh, call in the military, um, of course. But I told them we had to end the program. And it didn't arrive before that program had to end because, of course, um, it was getting any other um, you know, confusion to happen where people will, will probably uh, be injured in the process. That is what happened. At one point, the, the regional chairman of the NDC, uh, Mr. Zoka, what, who wasn't at the program though, but had been watching it on TV, drove there with his with his with his uh, with his supporters. They rushed onto the stage, and this was all live. Um, when while I allowed the and the MPP guys uh, to crop up successful level, and it was boiling over. Interesting as it is, but the, there's always one thing that we've witnessed this very electioneering, and we know that there's always also going to be a, pre a precedent set whether a party, let's say the NDC, um, is going to win for a third time running, or we're going to have um, a candidate who is the incumbent going to contest on the tickets of a party uh, 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 that will be in power for three terms, so to speak. So, no matter how we look at it, there'll be some um, precedent that will be set. Has mm. that in any way um, why we tend to have the level of animosity among the supporters of the two parties throughout the areas that you've been to? I must say, um, looking at what I've seen across the country, it's, it's, it's just, um, well, um, there's one word that, that, that I carry across mm -hmm. um, the nations, which is anger. There's a lot of anger in the system. I, I see that and I feel that. There's a lot of um, uh, frustration in the system. People are, people, th those who are, who feel that the system haven't treated them well. In other words, they're not happy with the status quo. 
have become very, very passionate about their personal circumstances and, and, and why they want to change it. And for most people, it's become almost a light and death um, you know, situation for them. And that is what is influencing, influencing what, I, what I'm seeing. Because when you, we go around from Tuesday to Thursday, talking to people in the marketplaces, in the villages, in the schools, etc., when people speak to you, they speak with passion. And you see that when somebody else comes along who tries to challenge what they know they're feeling to tell them something else, that sort of sparks a flame. I'll give you an example. In um, in Kintampo, when we did the program at Jema, mm. uh, yeah, one of those one of those uh, villages, the MTE asked a question about jobs, um, which of course has been the number one issue across the country for us. And he started by saying, "It is not true that people are unemployed in in Kintampo." And immediately he said that the crowd exploded, and when it exploded, in fact, we had hundreds of people charging to the stage, literally wanting to climb the stage, hold them up and lynch them. He had to take the police to stop them. Um, that, is, that, is what I'm, that is what I'm pointing at. Um, again, in when a queen mother brought water, dirty water, in, in, in a bottle which they drink to show the crowd, and the MC again said, it is not true that they drink such dirty water. The car exploded. We didn't have the same animosity where people wanted to lynch the MC, but you could hear. That, for me, is one of the biggest things I'm taking um, I'm from, from, from all the trips that we've been on. There's this anger in the system, um, and I, I'm really worried what might happen post-elections. People's expectations are not met in terms of who they believe should win the, should win the election. We've seen what what has happened in the U.S., where there's a spontaneous outbreak of protest and violence and vandalism because they expected one person to win and that didn't happen. That, for me, having traveled across the country is, is my fear, what might happen post-election, because people are very, very angry at the system. Those who also believe the system must be maintained are also very passionate, but not as passionate as those who believe um, their lives have, been, have, have, not, have not gone the way they expected. That, for me, is the reason why we are seeing such animosity across the country. And before we let you go, so is it not possible for us to be having a certain silent majority who believe that because of the anger that is coming from the opposite, don't want to come out with their views, and as a result of that, perhaps could be showing what they want to show on today? Of course, that's true, because we've been around talking to people, and... You go to the marketplaces, not everybody wants to talk. You go to a shop and you say, can we ask you what issues will influence your vote this year when I go with my volunteers? And they'll say, I'm sorry, I don't want to talk. And these are people who, when you dig a bit, boy, ask him why. The person is afraid that he might be attacked politically. And I must say, those are the people who actually will decide the elections. Because for those who would speak to you, they've already made up their mind. For these group of people, you cannot really tap into what they are thinking, but they will vote. Um, and those are the people who will switch, who, who, who will really decide, who decide the poses here. Uh, those you call the silent majority. Minority, yes, they are there. I mean, if you look at our elections since, what, 1992, um, the, the MPP and DC always have this core group of 5 million, 5 million uh, voters. Um, and it takes a few thousands more to decide between them. It's always been the case. And this is going to be the case as well. That's the minority you talk of. Those are the people who will be deciding elections, but those are the people you, you won't get to hear in the conversations on social media, on radio, even in the ballot box. We show up, they watch on TV, but again, they won't come to the ballot boxes and write something, put it in, or they won't even speak to a volunteer, but they know they're going to make a decision. And for me, that's, those are the people that... Uh, will be deciding elections uh, this year. Um, and, and those are the people who, um, for them, for many reasons that I have found, one mainly being the fear of being politically uh, tagged or, or being victimized, uh, why they stay off, but they are active ones the polls open 
on on this on December seven. But they've, of course, we also found people who say this year they won't vote because they feel disenchanted, disillusioned in their political elites that we have. Well, thank you very much, Evan Mensah. He's the head of the political decks and also the host and one of the producers of the Joy Ballot Box. It took place and ended this very Friday for the electioneering or the election season. Uh, please always know that this is your election headquarters. You can count on us for uh, an updated um, news coverage of what the election or pre-election activity will be on election day and post-election day. We're also here to bring you some great comprehensive coverage. As always, get interactive on Facebook. We are joining us on TV. It's uh, a page on Facebook. Where we're live currently. We've linked that very page to our Twitter handle. at join us on TV, and then you can also catch us through our interactive number on WhatsApp: zero five sixty eight hundred thousand.